primetime women's hoops happening in the Rose City. The Portland Pilots hosting Santa Clara at the Child Center. Pilots red hot at 4-0 in conference play. Their best WCC start in 26 years. Good evening, everybody. Ann Chet's joined by my broadcast partner, good friend. That's Jennifer Mountain, former standout at Gonzaga, made the coaching route as well in the WCC. All right, J-Mo, this is a game that Santa Clara desperately needs on the road. But, boy, Portland has been playing as well as anybody in conference. You're absolutely right. Off to a terrific start, 4-0 in conference. Both teams were picked in the top half of this conference. Santa Clara at home dropped two heartbreakers mm. at the buzzer. This is a huge game for them. They have to split on the road in this conference. And the Pilots feeling very good about themselves here at home starting a nice three-game home stretch. All right, we like to call it tail of the tape when we throw some numbers at you of significance. What do you got, partner? Well, the biggest thing is take a look at that first line there. Santa Clara is 9-0 and when they keep their opponents under 70 points. And you look at the scoring there by both teams. And then you look at the steals per game for Portland. Portland does a great job of turning people over and Santa Clara is averaging just under 14 turnovers a game. That's going to be a big one. Tess Heal. Say that name loud. Say it proud if you're a Bronco fan. How good is this freshman? Uh, she's terrific. Four-time freshman of the week so far this season. Fourth in the conference as a freshman in scoring to just over 16 points a game. She rebounds. She does a great job of penetrating and getting to the rim, getting to the paint. She's great at finishing around the rim. She is very driven, competitive, great from the free throw line. Portland must keep her out of the paint, especially against their zone today to pull off of the victory. Tess Heal from Australia. Okay. Portland's loaded with the Aussies, and you got to start with Alex Fowler. Oh, man, let's talk about this dynamic duo. Fowler, the player of the week in the conference last week, shooting 66% from the field, number five in the country. She does it all for the squad. She rebounds. She scores from all positions on the floor. She defensively leads the press and has just been terrific from the get-go. And then Andrews returning from her ACL injury, coming back immediately with an impact. She's averaging 16 and a half points, 4.3 rebounds in league. She's their floor general. She has the heart of a lion. And Portland is completely different when she is on the floor. The two of them combine for just under 40 points, 11 rebounds a game, shooting 63% collectively, and have 50 assists between the two of them, which is huge. Portland off to terrific start, primarily because of the leadership of these two and their performance on the floor. And Andrew's playing more and more minutes after that injury. Oh, do we love to see that. All right, we're locked and loaded, ready to go on the bluff the streaking pilots hosting santa clara the start of a critical three-game home stretch for portland lineups and tip coming up next Gorgeous evening here in the Rose City. We're on the bluff, University of Portland Child Center specifically. The Portland Pilots hosting Santa Clara in a really important WCC women's basketball game. Prime time start, and we're just moments away. Still feeling kind of festive. All right, J-Mo, let's look at these starting lineups. L let's start with Santa Clara. I just love the fact that Lexi Pritchard, the Portland kid, is healthy and playing. Absolutely. You know, welcome back, hometown girl. Like you said, injured last year. She's averaging just under eight points, four rebounds, does a lot for the squad, and really needs to be a big factor tonight. Missed all of last year with that ACL. All right, on the other side of the ledger, we talked about 
Andrews and Fowler, and boy, you're high on this Burnham kid, aren't you? I really am. I mean, she's so versatile. She scores, rebounds. She had 21 last weekend against Pep. They need a great effort from her tonight. All right, time now to bring in Brenna Green, the third member of our broadcast team. Brenna, what do you got? As you guys mentioned during the open, Alex Fowler on an amazing tear as of late, averaging 22 points, six rebounds, and five assists in the Pilots' two wins last week. You guys also mentioned her shooting percentage at 66.4%. I had to ask head coach Mike Meek what has led to this incredible efficiency for her because her shooting percentage is up 13% from this time last year. He said that she's not trying to do too much in double teams and that she's willing to pass the ball to her teammates. So ironically, it's her ability to share that is causing her to be one of the country's most efficient scorers. Back to you guys. <laughs> her ability to share. I love it. Brenna, thank you so much. Keep your eyes on Fowler. Pilots coming in at 10 and 5, 4 and 0 oh in conference play after that weekend sweep on the road last weekend. Santa Clara at 10 and 6, 1 and 2 with a couple of heartbreaking last second losses in WCC play. We are underway. Yeah, and talking to Coach Carr, I mean, you know, every now and then you you have one of those losses, but back to back can be huge. And you know, he really likes the the versatility of this group. So look them to look for them to respond in a really positive way. Literally two last second, and I mean last second losses. Otherwise, this club could be three and zero. Oh. But that was then. This is now underway. Really like that play by Edmondson, and she got deep inside. She did, and you certainly can't let somebody with that length get that deep in the paint. That's going to be a, a point of emphasis, points of the paint. We'll watch that stat tonight. Edmondson giving you nearly 10 points a pop for Santa Clara. Leads the club in rebounds, and she has the Broncos up 2-0 early. Kaitu wants to... Send it to Fowler. Good ball movement by the Pilots. And a big stick by Burnham. And that's just great ball movement. Well, you can see right off the bat, Santa Clara going into double Fowler. She did a great job of that touch pass back. And then the extra pass for that three from Burnham. We load up on what Fowler does in the scoring department. Yeah, I get that. But averages nearly four assists a game. Well, she's doing such a great job of recognizing the defense early. She's not taking an extra step. She feels it coming, makes the right read, and, and obviously hitting her teammates in the right spot. Look for Portland to really mix it up defensively. This will be a big factor tonight, whether Santa Clara does a good job of taking care of the basketball. Ten on the shot clock. Here's Pritchard, the ball fake. Haraki wants to drive. Little floater, kind of a wild shot. Ball on the ground, everybody diving for it. Shearer tries to find a teammate, and it'll be Santa Clara's ball. Well, that type of turnover right there, they're going too quick. Did a nice job of making them take a contested shot and then just settle for a second and then push tempo. Just go a little too fast right there. Fresh clock for Santa Clara, 3-2, to two, Pilots with the lead. Burnham's three, giving Portland that one-point edge. There's the middle of that zone, could be really dangerous. Front rim and off, and here comes Haley. Doesn't have the numbers, let's see what she tries to do. Pulls it up, Kaitu hesitates. It's a nice find, she just can't hesitate on that free throw line jumper. Good patience by Andrews. Another corner pocket, three attempt. Boy, and just too easy for Pollard. Pollard doing a nice job just attacking the offensive board, and again, like you said, easy layup. Pollard, new lease on her basketball life. The transfer from Washington barely played a lick in Seattle last year, and she's been a key figure for this Santa Clara team. Well, he talked about, you know, basically this is like her freshman year because she didn't get a lot of minutes, but she did get a lot of experience and play time. And there's Burnham with another three. Two for two from beyond the arc. Burnham buries both of those efforts. She had 21 against Pepperdine. Well, she's kind of been the recipient of a lot of kickouts because of the double team with Fowler and definitely done a good job of taking advantage of it. Portland doesn't butter the bread with its three-point shooting, but Burnham's sure feeling it. Nothing there for Haraki. Good block out by a collective Portland defense, and here comes Andrews. 
Thought maybe Burnham would pull the trigger again. She, she thought about it. Well, it was early in the shot clock. I think it was a really good decision. She can get that shot again. Absolutely, and, and honestly, her, really, she's so good in the mid-range game. And Four. Shear's gonna get the, the chance to go to the free throw line here. Shear was kind of clapping her hands in frustration. It was a great high-low look, and Shear thought she should have gotten that down for an and one. Yeah, she's probably right. Had a decent look at it. Not a ton of contact there, but would like to have that one back. Pritchard with the foul, her first, team's first. Shearer, 59% free throw shooter. Sure looked good on that one. Had a big game against Pepperdine with the 17 points, a couple of trays. Well, she really has the ability to have those types of games so long, lanky, can get in, you know, get into people defensively, but can score in the mid-range, can shoot the three, and obviously can post up in the guard spot if she has a mismatch. Frawley into the lineup, does all the little things, all the dirty work, the blue-collar kid, and is just a pest on defense, putting it mildly. Santa Clara does a nice job of taking care of the heat. Eight to four, Pilots with the lead. Well, we talked to Coach Carr ahead of time, and. You know, they're so guard-oriented. We're gonna wave off that basket on the offensive rebound attempt. So Fowler picks up that foul, her first team's first. You know, Portland relies on turning people over with their pressure. Santa Clara has a lot of guards, experienced guards, that do a nice job of handling that. That's gonna be a big factor. And, and you know, talking with Coach Meek, maybe not trapping as often as they normally do tonight. Kaitu back on the floor. Fowler will sit. Mariah Hudgens checking into the Santa Clara lineup. Nice inside look. Oh, you gotta make that if you're Edmondson. And Santa Clara very aggressive on the offensive boards. Yeah, and that's gonna be a big factor. We'll watch this stat as we move through. You can't give them second chance points. Santa Clara yet to see heel take off. And just as I say that, the yeah. freshman gets her home. Nice little cut to the paint there. Little 2-1-2, two, two, kind of a tempo press, not really trapping too much out of this. Sensational freshman campaign by Tess Heald. J-Mo talked about what she's done in short order for Santa Clara. Kaitu, what is this? Who are these pilots? Come on, they're hitting all kinds of triples. Three for three from beyond the arc, what? Well, it's the type of threes that they're taking as of late, I think, that have really been beneficial for them. They're in rhythm, on balance, not forced. Portland averages under five triples made a game, and they're coming out on fire. I couldn't believe how open heel was. It's like the defenders just went away. Well, on that pivot, all of a sudden, defense kind of left, gave her some space, and that's just too easy of a look for her. You can't do that. She gives you 16 points a pop. It was a layup, basically. Little five-footer. 11 to 8. Nice start to this game. This has been fun. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, come on. Emmy Shear, that angle, that, that's impossible. All right. <laughs> four for four from beyond the arc. My goodness. Answer not there. Again, offensive rebound. You like what Edmondson was doing, but unlucky there as the travel will go against Lara and Santa Clara. Again, this is a pilot club that averages 4.6 triples a game. And right now, they're a perfect four for four. Be still my beating heart. I cannot believe I am saying that. Keep it up, pilots. 14-8, Portland.
sport gear with the pilots looking snazzy in that sweater vest. I love it with the purple shirt, Mike. And what he has done, remarkable things. But I bet he blinked a little bit when Kai Tuu made her first triple of the year. Was 0 for 8 going into that stroke. And, man, that looked good the second it left her hand. I'm telling you, the type of shot that they're taking is, again, on balance. And yes. It's funny, talking to Coach Meek, one of their biggest keys was guarding the three-point line, and it's flip-flopped on them. Yeah. All right, 14 to 8. We're about halfway through the first quarter. Frawley. Okay. All right. That's it. I'm take the headset off. I'm going home. <laughs> I don't want to see any more. It's too good. I don't want anything to be wrecked. My goodness. We're going to have to dig around a little bit, J-Mo, and see when the last time the Pilots have gone five for five to open a game from beyond the arc. Wow. Hold on, a 6-0 run here in the last less than a minute here. Well, triples always help that. And again, really deep looks for Santa Clara. Heel does it again. Well, right now they have 10 points in the paint, and this is one of the categories that we have talked to Coach Meek about. Uh, you know, one of the games the, the, a couple weeks ago, they had 50 points in the paint, and it's not necessarily post play. It's guards getting themselves deep in the paint against the zone. And right now Santa Clara is doing the same thing. Well, can you say Lucy Cochran? I mean, <laughs> again, Lucy Cochran has been out with that foot injury for so many weeks now. The ultimate rim protector, shot blocker. Those shots aren't happening if Lucy's playing. You're, you're absolutely right. When, when you have somebody of shot blocking material out of the game like that, it certainly changes. That's where, you know, driving lanes, you got to close them up. You got to keep the ball in front and you've just got to make them kind of peck mentality a little bit. Jade Kadi with that foul, by the way, moments ago, her first. Kadi, one of the many Australians on this Santa Clara club. Obviously, the pilots can say the same. So right now, I believe there's, uh, the, the officials are gathering to see if one of the baskets was a three or a two. Correct. Again. And I'm not sure which basket is in contention. I'm not sure either. I think they're looking at Liana's last basket there, whether she was maybe had her foot on the line or the, the triple, which would yeah. have been her first. Correct. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So right now, no, I think it was the very last basket that she she just scored. OK. And the whistle blew. It was kind of awkward. That was awkward. That's why Coach Carr was a little bit upset. OK. That's why he was. Yeah. OK. Bill Carr in his seventh year with this Santa Clara bunch, nine wins away from 300. So both clubs will huddle. And while the officials discuss who to give the basket to in terms of, well, Kai two, is it a two, is it a three? What's going on? Right, right now, the, the score says 19-10. And you know, if you're Santa Clara, when every point makes a difference in those two heartbreaking losses, every point matters. Well, each possession really matters when it comes to league contests. I mean, they had they obviously had the back end of that one last weekend, but just the little things make the biggest difference. You just don't know. Free throws, turnovers, just uh, they call the foul, and the points have been taken off the board. Okay, that's, you know, I thought that was the first initial ruling. So Kadi gets nicked for the foul, they wave off the basket. It'll be Portland's ball underneath their own goal, 17-10. Pilots with the lead. <laughs> Kelsey Lindsay, why not? All right, so let me make sure I got this right. Six for six. Yep. Okay. All right. Kelsey Lindsay, no points in that last game. And Portland's white hot shooting continues. This has been an unbelievable first quarter for the Portland Pilots. Up 20 to 10. And the foul is going to go against Frawley, her first, team second. A little too aggressive there. But to your point, you know, you go back and you look at the shots that they're taking. They're going inside out, they're getting ball movement. It's not forced at any point. And just a great job of stepping up and hitting shots. And Fowler, who sat down quickly after her first foul, has not entered the scoring fray yet. Everything coming from beyond the arc for the most part for the Pilots, which is highly unusual. 
Kaitu'u steps into the double, then steps away from it and scores. Great patience, nice job of reading the defense, up and under, coming back to the strong side, and a great finish. They're six of their last six from the field. Wow. Long ball way off by Kadi, and here comes Haley Andrews. Shear skips out of her way. Lindsay. Wow. Little heat check right there. Yep. Portland's first miss from downtown. Wow. Edmondson did a really good job of kind of initiating contact with Kaitu'u, who picks up the foul, her first team's third. Well, credit Portland's defense in the fact that they're making them take contested, tough first shots. They've got to do a better job of not allowing offensive boards and, and letting them get to the paint. Fowler, Burnham, and Mikkel Meek checking in for the Pilots again, wide open. Nice take by Haraki. She's fouled inside deep again for Santa Clara. Count it. Haraki did a nice job of reading the fact that Burnham kind of went to the baseline there and cut back to the rim. Easy opportunity right there for the end one. Burnham with her first. You see here reaching right there. Nice finish by Haraki. Three-point play for Haraki. Santa Clara hanging around, J-Mo. Big basket right there to kind of yep. slow the momentum for, from Portland. Let's see if the Pilots can get Fowler going. Don't fall in love with the three, though, if you're the Pilots. I understand just the scintillating start, but you still got to get Fowler involved. Absolutely, and, and credit Santa Clara right there. Really tough defense inside. Really bodying her up, not allowing the pass going in. Hudgens, corner three. Big answer right there. Yep. So let's see again if the Pilots can go inside. There's Fowler, skip pass. Well, you see Santa Clara coming with the double team right off the bat. Fowler again doing a good job of recognizing. Really good inside defense by Haraki and company, but again, somehow, some way, the Pilots come up with that ball and draw the foul. Emmy Shear doing a great job. You see Burnham going in, trying to draw the foul, draw the contact, and Shear coming from that weak side, doing a good job on the offensive glass. Haraki picks up that foul. Pilots with a chance to increase the lead. Fowler, ball on the deck. Again, there's that double. 10 on the shot clock. Good cut from the backside by Shear, just a little bit short. 6-0 Santa Clara run. Broncos very much in this thing. Haraki blows past Meek. Heel with the three. You bet. Nine points now for Heel again. She leads this club, 16 points a pop. And again, the Broncos more than hanging around. Portland going a little bit cold. Burnham follows her miss. Ball ripped away by Heel, and I believe Burnham's going to be called for that foul. If that's the case, that's number two. Yeah, that's a big foul right there. Team's fifth, but Burnham, who's been so critical to this club. You know, it's we talk about Frawley and Andrews quite a bit, but Burnham is a part of that big three. She absolutely is. I mean, 10 games over double figures and really I mean like we talked about she scores in so many different ways and she defends she's long and really when people are double teaming Fowler they've got to have an outlet and she's done a great job of scoring heel already in double figures and we're in the first quarter what a sensational performance she has had already well, in impressive, too. She goes right hand from the perimeter, left hand, you know, kind of in that paint area. And they're on 11-0 run in this last two minutes, getting themselves back at the end of this quarter. Great job by Santa Clara. It was 22-10 to 10. moments ago, it feels like. And the Pilots getting kind of chilly. Santa Clara getting kind of hot. Well, Coach Carr likes the focus of this group, you know, talking about... Uh, what they've done collectively as a group, and he, he really likes 
their leadership and the focus and how they're competitive. Six seconds left to go in this quarter. There's the answer. What a huge answer by Shear. Leads this club shooting 47% from beyond the arc. She's got eight and oh boy, did the pilots need that. They sure did and 53% from the field, 70% from the three point line to start this quarter and just a great answer. Emmy Shear, nobody makes or takes more triples than this kid. Shows you why, a little breathing room for the pilots. They're up by four after one. Moments away from the start of the second quarter. Bill Carr and his Santa Clara Broncos trailing the pilot's seventh year prowling the sidelines for Santa Clara. Carr, his best season, 2020-2021. They finished nine and eight in conference play, did Santa Clara that year, and advanced all the way to the WCC semifinals for the first time in a few years. He's done a great job with Santa Clara. Yeah, and you look at uh, this first quarter here, 12 points in the paint, and there's a big shot right there. So Hudgens doing a great job off the bench. She's got six points, just one under her seasonal average. She has been feeling it. So underway, the Broncos cutting the deficit to one. Second quarter, here we go. Well, we knew this was gonna be a tight ball club. You look at all the stats throughout and very similar and both teams picked the top half of the conference. And every night out is a dogfight in this conference, as, as most of you have seen. But uh, Santa Clara lost two heartbreakers like we talked about. You knew they were going to come out responding and wanting to really take it to these pilots. Emily Sewell starting the second quarter for the pilots. Edmondson back on the floor for Santa Clara. Well, with Burnham with those two fouls, they don't want to pick up a quick one. Probably a smart sub here. Eight on the shot clock. Floater, Andrews, big stick. Her first points of the game, and with this lineup right here, you would look, look to her to score a little bit. Late in that first quarter, Andrews picked up an assist on one of the Portland Pilots made baskets. That puts her all alone in third place, career triples. The legend of Haley Andrews continues. Good look by Heal. Just keeps battling. Another opportunity for Santa Clara. And another offensive rebound. Not so fast, Hudgens. That will go the other way. That's six offensive boards. Yep on the game right now. And really, you look at the stats, 12 points in the paint, seven second chance points, and it's off those six boards. Santa Clara has been relentless crashing the offensive glass. Andrews got hammered, grimacing a little bit. I hold my, my breath when I see Haley go down. Yeah, absolutely. I think everybody in the gym did. Yep. Heel picks up that foul, her first, team's first, and Haley does 
gingerly get up. Remember, she blew out the ACL last year. Hmm. Hmm. She does such a great job with the hesitation dribble. Slows you down for a second yep. and just blows by a... You know, her line, Haley's against Pepperdine. 15 points, three rebounds, nine assists, three steals, and here's the big one, 37 minutes. There are no more, you know, minute yep. restrictions. You're not, you're just saying, Haley, if you want to come out, give me a nod. And she's saying, are you kidding me? I'm back. Yeah, she's she's back to her normal self. And, you know, it's hard to get into a rhythm when you have restricted minutes. And she was playing two and three minutes at a time. And she's back to her old self. Good look by Hudgens. Couldn't get it down. Another offensive rebound. Pritchard can't follow again. Offensive carom. My goodness. Well, that's one of the areas that Portland's going to have to fix if they want to be on the win column at the end of the night. All those O boards for Santa Clara getting extra chances. Heel picks up the... Boy, that was clever. And you don't often do that to Alex Fowler. Wow. Yeah, it left the ball kind of and then just swooped in. And again, a nice finish with the left hand. 13 points for Tess. Good hands. Just love the game of Hudgens. She's been terrific off the bench. I'll tell you, the game plan it literally is as soon as she touches the basketball, they are double teaming, triple teaming, trying to make her give it up and make somebody else beat them. Haraki, jab step. Nine on the shot clock. Hudgens gives it up. Edmondson flips it, no chance. Rebound, Andrews. Good defense by Kai, too. They're down at the other end, just walling up. Santa Clara doing a nice job with their transition defense. Frawley, wide open three. Nothing there. Hudgens with the board will go the other way. 28-26 early in the second quarter. Pilots had a 12-point lead in that first quarter, J-Mo. Well, and like you said, you can't fall in love with it. I mean, it was the right read. And Frawley can hit that shot. I'd like to see him maybe take him off the bounce and try to get to the paint a little bit. Good. Defense by the Pilots in the half court. Really good. Six and a swipe on deep in the shot clock. And that was all sheer right there. I mean, Santa Clara just doing it defensively. I mean, Alex Fowler is scoreless in this game right now, and that's not a stat that you normally see. Heck no. I mean, it's a three-minute drought, and you can tell the emphasis of the Santa Clara defense anytime number 12 sniffs receiving a pass, get on her. Absolutely. Again, you know, get it out of her hands, make somebody else beat you. Yep. Lindsay and do a checks job back on the in. boards. My bad, J-Mo, my bad. Lindsay checking back in. This is where we're not having Burnham on the floor hurt you. Nobody going to the offensive boards there. I think Santa Clara is going to give Fowler that shot. Good hands by Haley Andrews. Meek back onto the floor for the Pilots. Well, it's a shot that she can hit. And it's something that she has worked on in the offseason. And, you know, they, they started off the game six of six, but since then, one of seven from the three. Mm. There's the square, heel. Takes the contact and always reverses the other way and finds some real estate. Well, she can go both ways. And right now, Portland having a hard time defending her. And great with their pivots and patient. 15 points for heel averages. 16, we are tied. We haven't said that since tip. And Kaitu, who's been very aggressive looking for her shot, picks up her sixth and seventh points. Lead back with the Pilots. Well, Portland got caught in rotation right there. Just didn't get back in the press. Fortunate to not give up a layup right there. Yeah, Edmondson should have gotten that one home. But again, Santa Clara battling for every missed shot. And they'll get another opportunity to tie things up or take the lead. Maldonado 
She and Pritchard missing last year, both with ACLs, rehab together, good yep. friends, great teammates. Pritchard dumps it inside, a little too much heat, and Edmondson couldn't handle that pass. Oh, the right look just didn't execute it, but going back to the fact they, they rehab together, they live together. Yeah. It's nice to have a, a teammate to kind of experience that if you have to, to go through it together. And Santa Clara fortunate to have both of them back in the lineup this year. Kadi back on the floor. You know, we mentioned the fact that Cochran is out. MJ Bruno has been out for it seems like forever as well. And you see Fowler kind of say, it's about time. They're finally in the scoring column. Well, there's not too many games where we've been this far, this deep into the quarter, and she hasn't scored. And again, Edmondson just can't handle the pass. She's been wide open quite a bit underneath. Yeah, a good look right there. Again, just didn't make the catch. So Fowler, with only her fourth triple of the year, gives Portland a little breathing room. 33-28. Alex is three, first points of the game, and they were big. Santa Clara hanging tough. Welcome back to the Child Center. Tess Heal single-handedly in terms of scoring, keeping her club in it. More on Tess from our broadcast partner, Brenna Green. Hi, guys. You mentioned how dominant Tess has been in the WCC this year, but she's also been dominant by national standards as she was named the U.S. Basketball Writers Association National Freshman of the Week two weeks ago. Her head coach says this is no accident she's succeeding this much, and Tess would agree as she told WCC writer Jeff Verrato that in her first game at eight years old, she scored in the first six seconds of game action. Heel's passion for the sport started as, at a young age as she grew up in one of Australia's most well-known basketball families. Her uncle Shane was on the Australian Olympic team four times, and cousin Shyla was the eighth pick in the WNBA draft in 2021. Her passion really is limitless. As Coach Carr says, she's trying to win at everything, even if it's a drill, and it hurts her when she doesn't. A direct quote from Carr, Tess is a driven young woman, boy. Back to you guys. <laughs> I love it, yes. As far as the heel name, basketball royalty in Australia. And a great take right there. You saw her explosion. You know, penetration from that high post and then just a great spin move. It can go both ways. Very hard to guard. All right, so Heel, who leads this club in free throws taken, free throws made, already has 16 points, which is her seasonal average, make it 17. She's in the top 10 in the WC in scoring, assists, Field goal percentage, free throw percentage. As a freshman. As a freshman. My goodness. She's going to break a lot of records. Andrews Fowler with another triple. Consecutive three-pointers for Fowler, who comes into this game averaging 16% uh, from beyond the arc. 
Well, again, it's it's in a repertoire, and what Portland's doing is pulling her out to extend the defense. Big big post players aren't, you know, typically going to go guard her out there, so it just spreads the defense a little bit, and she's getting wide open looks. Good double team right there. Really good double team, and Heal was able to sell that foul as Shear picks up the foul, her first, team second. So, JMO, the Pilots are 9 for 16 from beyond the arc. Only two times has Portland been in double figures in with three-pointers this season. 11 against UC San Diego, 10 against San Diego, and they're nearing that usually uncharted territory already. Oh, my nice. goodness. Spin my move. goodness. Oh, Tess Heal, you are worth the price of admission. 19, baby. Her career high is 28. She could blow that out of the water. Well, you kind of saw in that last possession, they went to double team her, so I would expect Portland to do something a little bit different as far as trying to get it out of her hands. But just a great explosion mm. spin move. Andrews. Unfortunate there. I really love the... Off ball cut by Shear and Andrews finds her, but can't pick up the bucket. You're absolutely right. The cut's tremendous. I feel like she's kind of hesitant on the finish. Needs to go right to the rim and finish strong. But it will be the pilot's ball. Up by four. Kaitu left wide open. And for the third time this season, the Pilots have gone into double, double figures from beyond the arc. Wow. And she's got 10 points on the night. Kaitu, who has been terrific. Helping the cause. Hudgens answers with the triple herself. Back and forth we go. Nine now for Hudgens. Two over her seasonal average. How good has she been, the freshman off the bench? Absolutely. I mean, look at the freshmen that are contributing in this ball game. <laughs> Fowler with her third triple. That ties a career high for made threes. And we talked about, for the longest time, Alex not even in the scoring column. Well, she's filling it up now. Well, making a good adjustment by bringing her to the perimeter especially if she's going to knock down that three. Ball batted away. Good hands. It'll stay with the Pilots. Alex Fowler, shooting 16% from beyond the arc, has made three triples. She came in with a total of three. She's made three tonight. <laughs> what a wacky game this has been. <laughs> and I'm loving it. Good ball movement. Santa Clara's defense chasing a little bit. Six on the shot clock for Lindsay. Kai Tu'u. And the offensive foul will go against Liana. That is her second. Heal did a great job of anticipating the direction in which she was going to go to the rim, picking up that, that charge call right there. Her second, team's third. And Kaitu, who's been really good this game, and I think Mike Smart in the last buck 18 to, to sit her and not get her that third foul. Oh, you're absolutely right. Really smart. You get an eight-point lead with just, just over a minute. You certainly don't want to pick up a cheap one going into halftime. Maldonado. Oh, good find. Boy, and that's all Maldonado. I mean, Hiraki finishes, but man, what a pass, what a read by Maldonado. She didn't panic on the double team and found her down low. Great job. Under a minute to go. This has been a really fun game. And Andrews hits the deck again. Hudgens with her first, team's second. Haley Andrews. Last year, this team just wasn't the same when she went down, blowing her knee out against BYU, a game that the Pilots upset BYU here at the Child Center. I think that was back in February. Yep. And uh, with her looking more like herself every minute, it, it just, you, you think if you're the Pilots, this is a good sign for conference play. Oh, and in conference, you know, she's averaging 16 and a half a, a game, and 
it, it's not even the points and the assists. It's more of her leadership. She's a coach on the floor. She knows where people are, are going and, and just does a terrific job. Oh, Good, nice pass. Great dump inside. Easy bucket for Pollard. Maldonado just doing a terrific yep. job of setting her teammates up for success. Maldonado, welcome back to the court, kiddo. Yeah. All right, shot clock off, game clock at 10 right now. Andrews hesitates. Fowler will track it down. Lindsay. Ah, thought Lindsay had a good look at a three before that buzzer sounded. But it's a 44-38 lead for the Portland Pilots. Thanks to a blitzkrieg of triples from the Pilots, 11 three-pointers for the Portland Pilots. And man, that sets or ties a season high and made triples. Well, just a terrific job offensively. Again, at the type of shots that they're taking and people stepping up and obviously hitting big shots. You know, I thought really they did a nice job of setting the tone and Santa Clara responds and offensively gets 22 points in the paint in that first half. Huge number. Well, the Pilots are knocking on the door of setting a record from beyond the arc. 15 made threes is a pilot record. That was set against Washington. Seems like forever ago. All right, Brenna, you've got head coach Mike Meek. Can't wait to hear what he has to say about that first half. Hi, and 11 threes for you guys in this first half. That ties the most threes you guys have had in a single game this season, and there's still a half left to play. Just how nice is it for you to see your team connecting from deep right yeah, I, I think the, the great thing is we're sharing the ball, right? Like we're giving the ball to the open people, and uh, our team's catching it being shot ready. We, we just got to be better defensively. I mean, they've scored 38 points, and that's just too many right now. 38 points, 19 of those from Tess Heel. What are you going to tell your team about guarding her at halftime? Well, she's just a great player. We got we got to do a better job of staying in front of her and keeping her off second chance opportunities. And they got a team full of great players. So, you know, just it's more about the 38 points in general. We just got to do a better job of holding this team down a little bit more. Thanks so much, Coach Meek. Back to you guys. Brenna, thank you. Mike, thank you so much. What a fun first half this has been, which sets us up nicely for a good stretch run between these WCC rivals. It's 44-38, the Pilots leading the visiting Santa Clara Broncos. Halftime activities commence just around the corner.
This is Maria. Maria banks with CCCU. She has a first-time home buyer savings account and a dog named Dave. She plays pickup soccer. She's about to get a mortgage and loves listening to music. She's just the kind of member that can take advantage of everything CCCU has to offer. And I just like what credit unions stand for. From customer to customized, bank locally, live simply with CCCU. What is our way? Our way is unrelenting. Imposing as the mountaintops to our east, strong as the ocean to our west. Our way is forward, challenged by past achievement, expecting future success. Our way is committed, devoted, passionate. Our way fuels us to be different, to be inspired, to have faith in each other. What is our way? Our way is West. Some people might call it a job. I call it a mission. Helping people get back on their way. When you're a roadside technician for AAA, every day is different. We're always ready to be there for you when your call comes in. I love seeing that smile on a member's face when you get them rolling again. It makes you feel good. At the end of the day, it's all about helping people. That's what keeps me going. Even when I was little, just growing up, I knew I wanted to play in college. I've kind of always just wanted to go here so I'd come out to the games and like sit in the stands and see them. And like, I genuinely believed that I could be one of them. Being on the court felt like nothing else mattered. I just thought it was fun. I've always been not the most athletic, not the tallest, not the skinniest. I know what it's like to feel like you can't do it, but you really can. I play to prove others wrong. Go, go, go! I find purpose in making the people who supported me proud. Trust that all the hard work you've put in is going to pay off. Go out there and try to prove each and every person wrong that's ever doubted you. Running a race is one of the most physically and mentally challenging things, but crossing that finish line, that feeling just can't be matched. Competing feels like I'm on top of the world. All it takes is one conversation. I'm just proud of their team performance. All it takes is one opportunity to be successful. Pick 10, now in the championship round, like what can you tell me? I mean, what a celebration to have. Being in the stands as a little girl and now being on the court, being able to represent myself and the game and University of Portland. Like, I used to see myself as just a basketball player. Now I see myself as a role model. Here's to the next gen.
Child Center, the Pilots leading Santa Clara 44-38. We are at halftime. Very entertaining first half. Offensive minded. And Jennifer, delighted to have you with us. I've never seen the Pilots shoot like this, have you? No, I mean, just did a terrific job right from the get-go. I mean, they took what was given to yep. them. I mean, I thought Santa Clara came out. They took Fowler out by double-teaming, triple-teaming. They made the right reads, had open looks, and knocked shots down, and it's certainly something that hasn't happened so far this season. But Coach Meek has talked about their ability to shoot the ball, and it's paid off. And, you know, it was a bunch of different pilots getting into the shooting act from beyond the arc, but, man, they were raining threes early. Well, you see Burnham right there. I mean, like you said, it was multiple people. It's they shared the basketball. Kaya too, right there hitting three. You love to have your inside kids being able to step out and knock down threes. Sheer from the corner, kind of kiss it <laughs> off the glass. We call that a pool shot. Yeah. And again, there's the double team inside, and they've just done a nice job of kicking it back out. Frawley hits the three, and then Lindsay, or there's Frawley again right there, excuse me. And again, it just sharing the basketball. Right now, they are 11 or 12 assists on 14 field goals, and it's just great ball movement. Six different pilots have hit a three-pointer. Six different pilots. Think about that. 11 threes in all. That ties a season mark, and 15 is a program mark. My goodness, they just never stop. And after a little bit of a cold spell, they heat it up again. Well, we have a half to go. And I, here's another one. Alex Feller, I think there's a great adjustment right here by Portland. Because they were double teaming, they pulled her to the three-point line, and she had the ability to knock down those shots. Fowler ties a career high with three triples, came into this game with a total of three triples. Kind of well, tells you what she was feeling. Absolutely. But you look at, you know, field goal percentage. Both teams shooting really well. The 11 of 19, again, the three-point line has been a huge factor but watch the rebound category Santa Clara did a great job of getting to the offensive glass nine offensive boards both teams sharing the ball and it's been a very clean basketball game at this point both teams with four turnovers so everybody getting into the scoring act for the Portland Pilots Tess Heal doing all the damage for this Santa Clara bunch what a first half she's had with the 19 but more stats that kind of bear fruit in terms of how this game's playing out well you you look at this and the 22 points in the paint and the second chance points 11 to mm, 5 in Santa mm, Clara's mm. favor that's a category right there and you heard coach me talk about the fact they gave up too many points in this first half 38 points is too many in his in his book both teams only score 70 72 points a game and right now we're on track for a big one okay i'm gonna have you put your coaching cap on how do you stop heel well i think you got to keep the ball out of her hands you got to keep her out of the paint maybe be a little bit more physical with her and i honestly think they've got to do a better job once she does get the basketball i feel like her pivoting and her patience has created a little bit of a, a, a gap defensively all right 44 38 that's where we stand third quarter just moments away from starting here at the child center heck of a game here between these two WCC rivals. Definitely this one in the balance, so come on back for a great stretch run.
Welcome back to the Child Center. The Pilots leading Santa Clara 44-38. So many storylines in this really competitive game. And it's been a ball to be a part of. We're glad you're on board as well. Santa Clara once down by 12, coming all the way back to tie this thing with 5.40 left to go in the second quarter, but it's the Pilots leading at 44-38 at the break. Moments ago, our Brenna Green caught up with Santa Clara head coach Bill Carr. What did he have to say, Brenna? I asked him about Portland's shooting from three. He said, we just got to be better about identifying their shooters from beyond the arc and a little better about hedging as well. He also says, of course, Tess having a great half, but he needs this ball to move a little bit more for this team and get more players involved. He specifically said that Lara sh should potentially have a big second half. Back to you guys. Brenna, thanks. Glad you were able to co uh, catch up with Coach Carr. So third quarter underway, Santa Clara with the ball and trying to hang tough. Pollard not able to get it down. The lefty. A good job defensively. Again, t making them take a contested shot. And there's a quick turnover by Andrews. I guess she shuffled her feet on that pass inside. Portland doing a really good job of taking care of the basketball. That's only their fifth turnover. You know, you mentioned the 12 assists on 14 made baskets and taking care of the basketball. Yeah, both teams, four four turnovers at half apiece. Mm, that's a good clean game and a quick one too. Yep. Heel had a good look just short on that shot, claps her hands and Andrews will lead Portland. Kaitu with a strong first half. Wants that ball down low, and here she is. Fowler, could she get her 4-3? Yes, she can, a new career high. My goodness. Well, you can see Coach Carr kind of shaking his head right there. You know, you try to take her out of something, then she pulls you to the three-point line and knocks down four threes in the night. Wow. So again, Alex coming into this game shooting 16% from beyond the arc. She was three for 19 as Santa Clara once again gets deep. But Fowler exploding with four triples tonight alone. Pollard doing a nice job of cutting from the weak side. Portland not doing a good job of jumping to the ball and allowing an easy look. Fowler who just stuffs the stat sheets, one of the best in the business in offensive and defensive categories for the Pilots as Andrew scores. But we didn't expect this kind of scoring from beyond the arc from Alex. No, not at all. But uh, right there, that possession, you see Andrew's strength that gets herself to the rim and that hesitation dribble. She's just so strong. Look Good at that double, double team. team. You bet. Extra pass. Haraki. Good job by Haraki to wrestle that ball away from Andrews. No small feet there. They're just relentless on the boards. That's two offensive boards by Haraki just in this possession. So here's Pollard. 11 offensive rebounds. And they still have a chance to make the Pilots pay. Three offensive boards in just this possession alone. And Fowler draws the charge. So Edmondson with that foul, her first, team's first. And you like the nine-point lead. You like what Fowler just did, but you can't be giving up these old boards. No, if you want to be in a position to win this at the end of the night, you have got to do a better job of finding people and not giving up second and third opportunities or you're going to be in trouble. But on the other side, Santa Clara has not made Portland pay. You're right. At times, you're absolutely right. They have 11 second chance points off 12 offensive boards right now. And if you're a coach, you need more points in the second chance point department if you're getting all those offensive rebounds. Fowler, Frawley. Well, that's all Keely Frawley right yep. there, making it happen. The little thing, she gets herself to the boards and allows the second chance opportunity 
with Fowler going to the line. So a great job by Fowler to recognize that her defender fell asleep a little bit, and it was just a great cut. We see the tail end of that play as Fowler, who's one of the best in the WCC in free throw shooting, gets the first one down. Well, and that's one of the very few attempts that she's had in the paint tonight. Fowler top eight, field goal percentage, scoring, steals, assists, free throw shooting. She's just, she's something. There's right a there, steal. Yep, right there with the steal. Wild shot by Frawley, wants that one back. Yeah. That well, would have given the Pilots their biggest lead of the game. You, you know, you talk about Fowler, I mean, 66% from the field. Mm. And it's not like she's not getting bumped and banged and double teamed. I mean, that's a really incredible stat. So Shear picks up her second. And you got to remember this about Fowler. I mean, she's got 14 points now. Remember, she didn't score until midway through the second quarter. Yeah, it's the adjustment that Portland has made by pulling her to the perimeter that has made the biggest difference. She can crash the offensive glass. It's really hard to block somebody out coming from the top. Who figured she'd get into the scoring column with all of those triples, though, as the quick hands of Fowler knocks the ball out of bounds? Yeah, not her, not her go-to by any means, but again, something that she's worked on in the offseason. Well, if I remember correctly, she misses her first third, and I said, oh, they're, they're going to give her that shot. And then she hit like four <laughs> straight. What do I know? Yeah, yeah <laughs> I'll say. Chew on that, and shots. 51-40. Cold start of the third quarter for Santa Clara and another chance for the Pilots to take their biggest lead of the game. Yeah, 0 of 4 from the field so far in just under three minutes without scoring a field goal. Poke Great checked hands. away. Ball up for grabs. Broncos come up with it, but boy, they could use somebody to get hot. Hudgens, another offensive rebound. So Heal who's been kind of chilly in the third quarter. Wild shot, Pritchard. Here comes Portland. Heel has been a little bit cold in this third quarter, but man, she's defensively getting deflections, offensive boards. Look at Frawley, got a hand on it, but instead it's Maldonado who has been terrific in this game, leading the charge. Well, both teams kind of going cold. Both teams are in a scoring drought. Portland without a field goal, and that ends it right there for Santa Clara, but three minutes and 20 seconds, basically, without a field goal to start this, this half. Hudgens doing a nice job in double figures. Her career high is 16. She's got 10. Fifth double figure game of the season for Hudgens. Terrific off the bench. And boy, did Santa Clara need that as they were frigid to start this third quarter. Nine on the shot clocks for shot clock for Andrews. The roll by Fowler, not there. Triple, short, sheer. At this point, Santa Clara so cold from the floor hasn't been able to make the Pilots pay with all those offensive rebounds. Hesitation. Well, Tess Heal, you got to go out after her. She's a good three-point shooter. Yeah, you got to respect it. And she did a nice job of up fake. And again, one dribble pull up. And just very poised for a freshman. 21 and 8 now for Heal. Oh, great backdoor by Shear. Well, that's execution. That is execution. I like the stuff. <laughs> that's high percentage. Yep. This game's going to come down to stops defensively. Both teams really scoring at a high clip. Both teams came out a little bit cold to start, but it's going to come down to stops defensively. Shear with 10 points now, one over her seasonal average. Sixth double-figure game for Emmy. Staying out of foul trouble, staying on the floor and contributing. Seven on the shot clock. Hudgens, strong, but short there. Wow, the swipe and the score by Lexi Pritchard and all her friends and family from West Lynn going nuts. First points of the game right there for Pritchard. Again, it's Andrews trying to go too fast off the rebound or off the steal there. Broncos, like a broken record, we're going to repeat it though. Hanging around, won't go away, dumping it inside. Fowler misses the and one opportunity, but she'll go to the line down low where she belongs. Well, the difference in that possession right there was the double team was just a tiny bit late. 
And uh, Fowler felt it and went immediately to the rim, and that's how she's got to attack it if they're going to come at her. Edmondson picks up that foul. How about Shear, though? Terrific game for Emmy again in double figures. High percentage look there. Child Center, Portland, leading a gritty Santa Clara club, 53-46. Brenna, you've been kind of watching Alex Fowler do so many great things from all over the floor, including the free throw line. Yeah, we've talked about Alex Fowler's efficiency from the field this game, but she's also extremely efficient from the free throw line. This year, she is shooting a career best 80.5% from the charity stripe. Her next best season was her freshman year, where she shot 77.5% from the free throw line. She also ranks 15th in the NCAA in made free throws at 70. But what's really impressive is that the clip she's shooting them at is not typical for forwards. In fact, there are only four forwards in all of college basketball who have made more free throws than Fowler this season. And only two of those forwards have a better free throw shooting percentage than Fowler. Back to you guys. Brenna, that's great stuff. Man, does she do her homework. <laughs> I love it, Brenna. Well done. So 16 points now for Fowler. You know, she's been white hot the last four. 40 for 59 from the floor and getting to the free throw line. Averaging nearly 22 points a game is Fowler. Good answer by Santa Clara. And again, we've got ourselves a game. Maldonado just doing a terrific yep. job of gr seeing great court vision, seeing the player underneath. You know, you look at the stats at, at the end of that timeout there, and Santa Clara, five offensive boards in this quarter. Mm. However, they have not scored and had second chance points off of it. There it is. That's a big stat. That's the stat. The off offensive boards are terrific. Jump ball, possession arrow. Correct. Uh, favoring this pilot club. If you can't score off the second chance points, they don't do you a whole lot of good. You're absolutely right. So whistle away from the ball. Maldonado, first, fourth team foul. Now, you get all those offensive caroms, you're making the defense work, 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 work. But man, you gotta score some. Well, and, and sooner or later, th some of those shots are gonna go down and there's a, a tip ball out of the baseline out of bounds for a turnover, number six on the night. Maldonado, Maldonado quickly finding heel, way short on that three-point effort into the hands of Burnham, and here comes Meek. I thought Heel actually had a mid-range jumper right there. Good find, Shear. The double team. Another triple, you bet. Emmy Shear with another triple. She's got 13 points, and she's been leading the charge as well from beyond the arc, she and Fowler. Well, again, Alex doing a great job, Fowler, of finding her in that sweet spot opposite the zone. Shearer doing a great shot, getting in her vision. Offensive rebound. We've been saying it over and over. Can Santa Clara cash in? Well, the lead is 10. They got to keep heel in front of them on the penetration. And Hiraki with the great backspin splashes home the triple. She's got eight. 
That was a big basket right there for Santa Clara. Dumping it inside, single coverage for Alex. The reverse is there, what? footwork. And you can hear Coach Carr yelling help. Again, the double team just a little bit late, and that's her first basket inside the pain area of the night. I, I just can't even believe that. All those triples I get, oh, first basket inside the paint. Whew, sweet finish. Edmondson, or excuse me, that's Hudgens. She's having a good night. Boy, I guess off the bench, she's got 12. Her career high is 16. Hudges has been really good. Well, he's, she's got all their bench points right now. Answer there, Burnham. Wow, and that just takes the wind out of your sails if you're Santa Clara. And that ties a record. That's the most three-point field goals that Santa Clara has ever given up in a game with a quarter left to go. Wow. Just a breadth of a difference between shot and game clock. So the walk is going to go against Hudgens. So plenty of time for the Pilots to get a quality shot off to end the third quarter. Let's see what Andrews does. Well, you love to have her in late game situations or time and score situations because she's so smart. And Portland, four of their last four from the field. Got to put it up. One of the few misses it feels like from beyond the arc for the Pilots, and that was under duress with seconds to go in the third. Quality third frame for the Portland Pilots. They lead it 63-53 going into the fourth quarter. All those triples, really a burden for Santa Clara to bear. Fourth quarter on the way. into the fourth and final period. The Pilots leading Santa Clara 63-53. And shots Jennifer Mountain. Brenna Green, delighted to have you with us. Uh, lots of storylines. Santa Clara only getting two points from Heel in that third quarter. That really hurt. And the three-point shooting continuing for the Pilots. Well, the three-point percentage, obviously, and the shots for Portland, a huge plus. Defensively, I actually thought Heel had decent looks offensively, just didn't shoot the ball as well. But, you know, two points in that third quarter looked to her, make, to, her to make a big difference in this fourth. Brenna hovering near that Portland Pilot huddle going into the fourth quarter. Brenna, what do you got? The big emphasis for Portland in that huddle was their defense and rebounding. At one point, Alex Fowler looking at her teammates and saying, we can do whatever we want on offense in this game, but we have to get back on defense in order for us to be successful. Back to you guys. Good Thanks, defense Brenna. by Burnham there. Making her, again, take a tough shot. She's very frustrated with herself right now. Heel could not miss in that first half. 
But it's been tough sledding in the third quarter and to begin the fourth for the Super Frosh for Santa Clara. Gotta love that. Sewell off the bench contributing. Well, a great strong move to the rim there by Sewell. Not something that we see all the time, but really good job of just going right at him. Second 12-point lead of the game for the Portland Pilots, but not for long as the lefty Pollard. Again, the Washington transfer having a solid game. Big triple. Great answer right there by Pollard. She's got nine points on the night. Averages nearly 10 a game, so she's right there, and Santa Clara State in the obvious uh, needed that. Andrews thought she had the offensive rebound. Strong hands of Santa Clara will go the other way. And if Heal can get cooking like she was in the first half, Santa Clara thinks they've got a chance. Well, she was unstoppable in that first half. Scored from the three, did a nice job in the paint. Again, I can see a little bit of frustration on her part. You don't want to force the issue, but experience you know, this is where, you know, if you're a freshman, you just got to be a little bit patient. Let it come to you. Tons of minutes for Heal. Maybe she's getting a little gassed. Remember, she had the 19 points in the first half. Kadi. Well, right there, closes it to a six-point game for Santa Clara. Two great offensive possessions right there. Back-to-back -back triples for the Broncos. Pilots not able to shake the visitors from Santa Clara. Fowler inside look and gets the kind roll. But you can see that Santa Clara has kind of gone away from the double team. Alex able to go one on one a little bit. We'll see if they'll mix that up of where she's catching the basketball. Fifth 20 point game of the season for Fowler. Who Pollard. Again, great answer, 12 points on the night. You've got to make her put it on the ground right there and penetrate. Back and forth we go, heck of a game. Frawley looks to square. Defender kind of backs off a little bit. Good hands by Hudgens. Wild shot by Haley. Kadi comes up with it. Hudgens. Unlucky there. Yeah. If you're a Santa Clara fan, so it'll be the pilot, the pilot bas the pilot basketball in their hands off the turnover. Great idea. She just got herself too far underneath the basket. And again, really clean game. Their eighth turnover of the game. Portland with nine. Remember, so far this season, when Santa Clara keeps its opponents under 70 points, they win. They're nine and zero. Oh. Yep. Uh, ah, just missing. Fowler wants that and one, but she'll go back to the free throw line where she is perfect. Foul on Pollard, her first. What a game for Alex Fowler. Scoreless midway through the second quarter and then goes nuts from beyond the arc. And she's already posted another 20-point game. She's perfect from the free throw line. She's got 22 points and counting. Well, I love the adjustment that they made by pulling her to the perimeter, giving her an opportunity, and she obviously took advantage of it with her skill set. The last four games coming into tonight, Fowler has averaged nearly 22 points a game over her seasonal average. Well, she's going to keep that hot streak going. West Coast Conference Player of the Week last week. Good defense by Portland. Good ball movement by Santa Clara. Got a good look at it, but Portland doing a nice job of contesting the shot and then rebounding. Crucial couple minutes here. This next couple minutes, you know, if, if Portland can do a good job of extending this lead or Santa Clara, again, responding and cutting that, that deficit, we're gonna have a barn burner at the end. Frawley didn't want the three. Here's Shear. Putting the ball on the deck. Nine seconds on the shot clock now for Andrews. She's going to take that pick and look for the roll. Frawley. That's just a great hustle play by 
two hustling players. You know, it was Burnham and Heal who understand every loose ball is crucial. And Macy doing a nice job of anticipating the miss on the weak side. She just got a little bit too far underneath the basket. She's been kind of quiet after she got into that foul trouble, not been as big a factor offensively for Portland. Kaitu back. Ooh. You want the walk and you got it. Yeah, and Haraki even knew it. It was a little bit of a late whistle. And we'll go the other way. Well, that's a big turnover. You know, back-to-back -back turnovers basically for Santa Clara. Can Portland capitalize? Another three. Whistle waves that off. Unlucky for the Pilots. Frawley picks up her third on the shot away from the ball. Yeah, a little too physical. You just can't move. Trying to get Shear an open look there in that corner. So Santa Clara draws ever closer, and then they go into a little bit of a deep freeze. Let's see if Heal can figure that out. Basket didn't want it. Her footwork is sublime. Yeah, she does a great job of pivoting. He got a mismatch inside with heel on Fowler. Well, you got to recognize that. Here comes some help. Andrews tosses it to the sideline. And a good read, just miscue on that pass by Andrews. No field goals for almost three minutes for Portland. 69-62, the Pilots leading Santa Clara. 4.41 left to go in this fourth quarter. Come on back. Should be a good stretch run. Fowler, reigning player of the week with her fifth 20-point game of the season. Her career high is 35. She's got the 22, but remember, she didn't get started until midway through the second quarter. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Santa Clara did a great job of making her give it up early. Great adjustment by Portland by pulling her to the perimeter, and she has responded and really scoring inside out now. Last year, these two teams split games at the Child Center a game that the Pilots won in overtime. Alex had 32, 13, and four. Nice inside look to Edmondson. Nice slip on the on ball right there by Edmondson and a, a nice find by Heal. 69, 64, 420 left to go. And Heal bodies up and picks up her second foul. Santa Clara foul number 34, Tess Heal, her second. second and Portland's done a pretty good job this second half. That's only the, the 10th point in the paint given up 22 in the first. Fowler picks up that dribble. Pilots have already shot more threes than at any point in any game this season. Frawley tips it, 
into the hands of Andrews. That's just a hustle play by Frawley. Sets up Fowler, and those second chance opportunities, the Pilots taking advantage. Absolutely, and that is Andrews' seventh rebound of the game, leading mm. this Portland squad in the point guard spot. The lead is seven. Santa Clara with a bevy of offensive rebounds, but haven't really done a whole lot with them. Inside look, and the kind roll. Good game for Edmondson. Well, Portland kind of struggling with this on-ball action. They're slipping, not communicating, and giving good looks to the Sa Santa Clara post kids inside. So again, Santa Clara hanging in there without heel doing much in this second half. Eight on the shot clock for Andrews. She takes that high pick from Kai Tuhu. That's just really good defense by Santa Clara. Three on the shot clock. Yeah, short clock here. They've got to be aware. Don't want to foul if you're Santa Clara. And you got to execute if you're Portland out of bounds, which they do a really good job in the baseline out of bounds. Three on the shot clock. Hudgens back on the floor for Santa Clara. Andrews looking for a cutter. That's good Santa Clara defense. It'll be the Broncos ball with a chance to carve into that deficit. Absolutely. And, and I'm, I'm really amazed that Santa Clara has been able to hang in there without heel scoring for darn near 10 minutes. She's had opportunities. She just hasn't knocked it down. And 19 of her 21 points coming in the first half. She's not going to quit well, taking that's shots. A, that's the same move that she had in that first half. Again, just not knocking them down. And I don't know if she's pressing a little bit, but she's one of eight in the second half. Frawley rimming out on the three. Heels got to keep shooting, though, huh? Oh, absolutely. Haraki in trouble. Should be three seconds. Oh, good timeout by Coach Carr right there. Yeah, that was smart. Yep. Carr knew that Haraki was in no man's land and stuck. And at this point, obviously, turnovers aren't your friend. All right, 71-66. Again, the Broncos hanging around. 2.20 left to go in the fourth. Ooh, this has been a fun one. Emmy Shear, one of six or seven Portland Pilots to connect from beyond the arc, having a terrific game with the 13 points to go along with three boards. Yep, three triples, too. Yes, she has. She's had been terrific. So 2.20 left to go in regulation. Big inbounds play for Santa Clara. Hudgens back rimming off. Fowler with another board, and that's a big, big rebound for yeah. Fowler. Good look from the free throw line. Great look. Hudgens, who has the 12 points, just four off her career high. That was a really, really good take. 
Well, 12 of their 15 bench points have come from her. Just a terrific effort. Fowler all alone. And again, the kind roll for Alex. Shooters touch all the way, 26. Well, you do not want to give her a free throw line jumper. She's so good from the free throw line. 35 is Fowler's career high. Probably not going to get that tonight, but how good has she been once she got going? Inside dish, and oh, heartbreaker. Edmondson has got to score that. Body's flying. And smart play by Frawley. Just bring it out. The clock is your friend. Really smart. Boy, that was a heck of a unfortunate miss for Edmondson and Santa Clara. Yeah, I mean, just terrific. Look, she got caught off on the dribble, and then Edmondson just kind of a little too fast, I think, on the finish. We can kind of update you on scores around the conference. Right now, Gonzaga 59, USF 51, LMU 33, St. Mary's 29, and Pacific leads Pepperdine 71 to 63. Thanks for that, J-Mo. And while I'm thinking of it, you know, it doesn't get any easier for Santa Clara because up next, they go to Spokane and take on Gonzaga. Well, again, a team that has picked in the top of the conference, you lose those two at home. You know, if the score stays this way, you drop this one and then going into a really big environment in Spokane, a tough place to play. Not an easy start, but a team. I mean, you look at all the scores around the conference. I mean, any given night, people, anybody can beat anybody. So it's, it's really going to be fun at the end of this conference season to see where everybody ends up. Shearer splashes home the triple. The Portland Pilots have now hit 15 triples, and that ties a program record. Wow, and what a time for that to happen. And Santa Clara has never given up 15 threes. Wow. This has been the difference maker in this game. 15 triples now for the Portland Pilots, a program record in made threes. And you look at this score. And you know, okay, there's where you're hanging your hat on this outcome. Absolutely. And I, I love the confidence in which they have stepped up and shot from the three-point line. And Santa Clara has been cold. So it's a tale of two sides of the ball with the pilots continuing to pound from beyond the arc and also getting some inside looks and Santa Clara going cold down the stretch here. Yeah, just under three minutes without a bucket. Mm. 0 of four from the field. And, had, and they've had some opportunities. It's not like they haven't had opportunities, just haven't fallen for them. So you got a foul now if you're Santa Clara. That's going to go against Pritchard. The Oregon native will put Shear on the line. Emmy, a 59% free throw shooter, but she's been perfect from the charity stripe tonight and continues to add to her total. Yeah, I'm actually shocked when I hear that number because she's just so much better of a shooter than that. So 18 points now for Shear. That's one off of her career high. She had those 19 points against San Diego with the four triples. Well, she's got four trays tonight, does Shear, and that ties a career high. Wow, what a game for Emmy Shear. Well, she's so versatile. I mean, not only can she score, but like if you look at the other end of this, where defense really the stops, we talked about getting stops. She is one of the primary defenders day in and day out for this group. Long, lanky, she can rebound. She's got three boards on the night, but uh, just a good overall performance from her. This has been one heck of a game for the Portland Pilots. Santa Clara just has not had an answer defensively. And this game will go in the books. Good execution on the sideline out of bounds. Hudgens just missing that shot, but a, a really good look. So Shearer has two free throws and a chance to set a career high. First free throw is true. She's been perfect again with her charity tosses.
Career high, Emmy Shearer. Congratulations. Boy, what a game she has had. 20 points. The layup for Heal. Too little, too late. All told, a really good game by the freshman. Scintillatingly white hot in the first half, but just cold to truth be told in the second half. Yeah, I mean, tremendous effort. And again, she's had looks at the rim. She's done a nice job uh, of getting herself. I, I'm really impressed with her game. I love the way she pivots, can get to the paint. Um, and again, she's going to have a great career at Santa Clara, but uh, just falling a little bit short in that second half. That field goal when the game is well in hand for the Pilots, her first bucket since 4.20 left in the third quarter. Two of 10 in the second half. Mm. And you can see the, the disappointment and frustration on her face. We have a final score, uh, Pacific 74, Pepperdine 65. Pilots. They can live with the 12 turnovers when you look at the assists. 21 assists. Well, another score, uh, Gonzaga 63, USF 52, and USF and Portland are gonna be kind of fighting for that spot, I think, in that second spot. We'll see what happens. 25 made field goals for the Portland Pilots. 21 assists on those 25 made buckets. That is efficient, yeah. effective. You, that's when you beat defenses because you're spreading the wealth. Spreading the wealth, sharing the basketball, and making really good decisions and good reads. I, I really was impressed. I mean, Fowler has been getting double teamed, triple teamed, and I, I feel like they've done a really good job in the last four or five games of once the ball is kicked back out, of making good decisions of either shooting it making the extra pass or penetrating. And, and you can just see the rhythm offensively for Portland really coming into play. Yeah. So this will be the fifth straight victory for the Portland Pilots. That is huge. You know, you stop and think about their start in conference play. It'll be their best in 26 years. And you're doing it with two of your big contributors, yep. with Cochran and, and Bruno sitting out with injuries right now. Just the rotation has tightened up quite a bit, and not having that rim protector defensively makes a huge difference. There hasn't been a single block in this game. It's amazing. You know, since Lucy's injury, the Pilots have had a total of seven blocks, 32 before the injury. Yeah. You see the factor, the Lucy Cochran factor. Well, in, in all those games, the points and the pain are just so different than when she's playing. Let's see if Santa Clara will finally call off the dogs, and they do. Crowd reacts and appreciates the performance by the Portland Pilots, one of the best of the year, 81-71, the victory over a gritty Santa Clara bunch. Absolutely, just a great team effort. You got Fowler with 26, Shear with 20. I mean, Kai, too, I thought had really good minutes with 10. Burnham kind of quiet, but nine points. You, you almost have four people in double figures, and that's exactly what they're going to need, especially with the shorter rotation moving forward. And when you look at what's coming up for the Portland Pilots at home against USF and Gonzaga, how huge was tonight's victory? Big victory, and like I said, I mean, it, you're, you're saying it doesn't get any easier. You know, Gonzaga defeats USF 63-52, to 52, but a very, very quality ball club with USF coming in. Can't say enough about Fowler. 26 points, seven boards, four triples. That is a career high. She came into this game with three triples total, <laughs> had four tonight. Very impressed and very happy for her. I mean, I, again, the adjustment of pulling her to the perimeter that they made, you know, yes, yeah, she did. She knocked down those shots, but I think it also just extended everybody and made it a little bit easier for Portland. Speaking of the great Alex Fowler and the great Brenna Green, <laughs> they're going to go 
toe-to-toe -to -toe in this postseason or post-game interview, Brenna? <laughs> I'm not going to try to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Alex Fowler, <laughs> but my basketball career is well behind me. Uh, 26 points for you tonight, but it was how you did it that was so impressive. In our pre-broadcast interview, your head coach said, you know, one of the places she's really improved is from the three-point line, but we just haven't seen it so far this season. Four threes for you tonight, a career high in a single game. How did it feel to see the Rock go through the net from long distance? It felt really nice. You know, the coaches have done a really good job develop me, developing me each year and year, and I'm really just trying to expand my game, and I'm really glad it kind of showed tonight. But also, again, like, credit to Haley, credit to all our point guards and players for finding, uh, for finding me on the open shot. Going to continue with the three-point theme. Uh, 15 threes tonight ties a program record in a single game. And 15 threes also. Uh, Santa Clara has never given up 15 threes in a game in their program's history. What does it do for this team when the ball is going through the net from long distance? You know, it gives us such a big uh, boost of confidence. You know, in the past, this last year, and even this season, you know, it's, we've been struggling a little bit from the three-point line. And I think tonight, you know, I think we started six for six from the three-point line. I thought that was, you know, a huge credit to us. We're really working on it in each training. We're trying to expand that. And uh, I'm just really proud of our team for doing it. The most important number, though, 5-0 yeah. in conference play. How proud are you of this team for what you guys have accomplished so far in WCC play? I'm really proud of our team. You know, we've been through so much adversity this uh, preseason. We've got injuries, people coming in and out. We're, you know, I just think our team's so strong. And every every team goes through adversity, but it's the way we've been handling it. And having a tough preseason schedule, learning from that, and just coming out in this 5-0, like, you know, it's, it's amazing for us. Alex, thank you so much. Congratulations. Thanks. Back to you guys. Brenna, Alex, thank you so much. Heck of a victory for the Portland Pilots. They stay clean in conference play. 11-5 overall, 5-0 and oh in WCC play. That is the key, as Brenna said. So we're going to take a quick break. 81-71, Pilots with the big victory over a Santa Clara team that for so much of this game would simply not go away. But just too many threes from those Pilots. They got some inside stuff, too. Come on back. The final from the Child Center. The Portland Pilots putting on a show offensively, defeating Santa Clara. The final 81-71. Brenna Green hustling like crazy, tracking down Mike Meek. I love it. Brenna, you and Mike, take it away. All right, we're going to have Brenna cued by our photographer, uh, and we'll see if she can hear us now. Brenna? You guys have just been incredible in conference play so far. How does it feel to be 5-0? and oh? oh, it feels awesome. I mean, I just really, our focus has been so great. The togetherness, the sharing the ball. I, you know, I still think there's things we can improve on. And, and, you know, just getting healthy is one of them. So we got some key players still out. But, you know, I, I definitely feel like the team's coming together and playing much better now. Asked you about the threes at halftime. Got to ask you about it yeah. again. 15 threes ties yeah. a program record. Yeah. Santa Clara has never given up 15 threes before in their program's history. What does it do for your team 
when you're seeing the ball go through the net from well, beyond you, the arc? You know, I just I feel like we're a great shooting right, team, and it's been a little bit of a struggle, you know, f the last few years. But we definitely been shooting a lot better this year, and, and, and you know, I felt like they were playing in, and, and I felt like again our team just shared the ball really well, and. I think it was like 21 assists tonight again. This is just uh, almost every league game, I think over 20 assists. And, you know, I'm just so proud of the way our kids work together and share the ball and care about one another. And, uh, and I think it paid off in threes tonight. Fowler, in particular, four threes. You said in our pre-broadcast interview that we hadn't quite seen that come to fruition yet, but you knew it was coming. It yeah. came tonight. How exciting is that? Uh, I, I, you know, I used four for seven tonight, and Alex is a great shooter. And, you know, I think a lot of shooting is confidence, and she hasn't really gained that yet, but I, you can see it coming out more and more in practice, and obviously tonight was a really great shooting night for her, and uh, she's capable of many more of those, too. Looking ahead to USF, what's the keys for that game? Oh, they're they're just, a, a, again, a great team. I, they're 12-3 and three going into tonight's game. Of course, I haven't seen how they did tonight, but they're really up-tempo. They're a fun team to watch. They play hard on the boards. Like, we're going to have to guard the three-point line even better tonight, and you know, I do think there's some room for us to improve defensively, so I think we're going to need to have a better effort against them. Thanks so much, Coach Meek. Awesome. Back to thank you guys. You. Brenna, Mike, thank you so much. Satisfying victory, to be sure, for the Portland Pilots. Numbers, Jennifer Mountain, what jumps out at you? Well, it's the three-point line. I mean, we've been talking about it all night, shooting 52%. They're normally 28% on the, on the season, and just a huge great job uh, rebounds I mean everything pretty much equal I thought turnover wise especially uh, both teams till late did a good job and it was a pretty clean game let's peel back even more layers as far as stats are concerned uh, you know this is this is very revealing as well so we've got uh, 15 bench points for Santa Clara and obviously you know, you, you score off the, the turnovers if you're the pilots, and, and some of those jump out at you. Yeah, I mean, 14 points for Santa Clara off the turnovers. The points in the paint, I think, are the big one. 36 points to 18. I thought Santa Clara did a nice job of creating off the bounce. You know, Heel was really good in that first half. Fast break points, I mean, seven for Santa Clara to, the, to zero. But it really wasn't an up-tempo game. It was more th methodical. And then you see the largest lead there, and obviously Portland came out on top. 36 paint points for Santa Clara, but most of that damage in the paint was done in the first half. Better defense and some cold shooting by Santa Clara. Yeah, I think they made a nice defensive adjustment in that second half coming out, and you heard Coach Meek talk about the fact giving up 38 points in the first half is just too many. And they hang their hat on defense, whether it's full court pressure, half court pressure, they mix it up. And I thought they did a nice job of mixing it up, making it difficult for Santa Clara. Heel, in, in particular, struggled from the floor, only going two of 10 in that second half. And, and doing a nice job of rebounding late in the game. All right, as we mentioned, this is game one of a three-game home stretch for the Portland Pilots. You see what's coming up. Oh, baby. I mean, you got San Francisco coming in, which is huge. A team that is picked in the top of the conference. A very, very guard-oriented, can really shoot it. Um, and then Gonzaga, number one in the conference. You know, they're receiving votes number one in the College Insider with mid-majors, and then at St. Mary's and at Pacific on the road, always tough road trip. Well, the good news is, is the Portland Pilots have already shown their medal on the road with a couple of road victories in WCC play and now a home victory as well. Absolutely, and, and the road trips are gonna be huge. I mean, that's gonna be where I think people separate themselves in the conference. Every night, if you don't bring your A game, you, you have a chance to lose. So it's really important that they go in with the same focus that they've had these first five games. All right, that's gonna do it from the Child Center. Portland defeating Santa Clara 81-71. Pilots pick up another crucial conference victory, raising their WCC record to 5-0. They keep pace with Gonzaga atop league standings. For Jennifer, Brenna, and everyone on our broadcast crew, I'm Ann saying so long from the bluff. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. See you down the road. Pilots win it. 81-71, tying a program record with all those threes. 15 in all. Read it and weep. Good night, everybody.